Duchenne is a profoundly disabling and fatal condition without exception. After the age of 13, there's a progressive downward decline. Individual measurements such as the six-minute walk test may have small day-to-day -day variabilities, but the course of the disease is consistently downward in the teenage years. Boys with DMD grow to be men with DMD, and they should not be forgotten here today in this discussion. There's been much focus and emphasis on walking as an endpoint in DMD, but walking is, an end, is not an endpoint for a young man with DMD. Retaining upper limb strength is important for being able to eat, drive a wheelchair, type on a keyboard, and hold a job. These are the endpoints that matter. My laboratory was the laboratory which identified the gene responsible for Duchenne dystrophy back in 1986. And we showed that major mutations at this two and a half megabase locus were deletions in both the severe Duchenne form of dystrophy as well as the milder form of Becker muscular dystrophy. We showed in 1988 that protein was not being made in Duchenne biopsies published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Becker patients were shown to make an abnormal truncated protein of variable degrees of levels of, of the protein. This led us to propose, as Steve Wilton did, that potentially we should try to block the inclusion of exons and convert a Duchenne into a Becker by changing the reading frame and, and producing protein. Sereptors at Tepperson is designed to block exon 51. studies in animal models also showed that much lower levels of dystrophin have a clear measurable impact on muscle function. And this is true whether we're expressing full-length dystrophin, Becker-like dystrophins, or even the microdystrophins that were developed in my laboratory. In fact, our studies indicate that any dystrophin expression has a beneficial effect on overall muscle function and physiology. We pioneered PMOs for exon skipping and developed the Ateplosin sequence license to Sarepta. The dystrophin western blot data presented by Sarepta demonstrates greater scientific rigor than is evident in any other published reports I have studied. Based on all our research and the data presented by Sarepta, it is evident that ateplosin induces de novo dystrophin expression. I believe that it is reasonable to conclude that the increase in dystrophin is responsible for the clinical benefit reported in the patients. For me, the best evidence was their western blots, which showed 0.9%. We never see 0.9% in patient biopsy samples. We know well from the earliest genetic DMD studies that the amount and quality of dystrophin production is the primary determinant of outcome in this disease. Dystrophin production linearly correlates with outcome. There has never been shown to be a threshold effect under which dystrophin level does not matter. Any increase in dystrophin is meaningful. Dismissal of the immunofluorescence data seems to be skipping the critical point that these veterinary pathologists identified a clear difference between treated and untreated patients, 17% versus less than 1%. Given the level and distribution of induced dystrophin being observed, it's reasonable to expect that some positive fibers express as much as 5 to 12% of normal dystrophin, levels clearly predicted to impart some production of myofibers from contraction-induced damage. Exon skipping works on very small groups of muscle cells. We have clear data that even a single dystrophin-positive fiber protects adjacent fibers. So patchy or mosaic, mosaic expression of dystrophin has a wider effect than just counting dystrophin-positive fibers. I know well the difference between Duchenne and Becker muscular dystrophy, as I have cared for more than 150 boys and men with these disorders. And note that the fibers with dystrophin are larger and more frequent than any biopsy I've ever seen with revertin fibers. I believe these dystrophin fibers are driving the clinical effect. Furthermore, because Justin and Cole are so much stronger than I, had, I would have expected, if I met them for the first time today, I would have suggested they have muscle biopsies. When I consider the post atapsilarin biopsies and their physical examinations, I would have reclassified them as having Becker muscular dystrophy. Thus, I do believe that dystrophin-positive fibers are a clear biomarker for strength and rescue of muscle. 
36 prominent scientists and physician experts in Duchenne provided the FDA with a letter clarifying issues raised. Quoting from that letter, we conclude that there is strong evidence of induced dystrophin production upon prolonged, prolonged Teplerson exposure. The letter goes on to say, the findings of this trial are sufficiently robust to support the proposed mechanism of action of a Teplerson to provide a plausible explanation for the relative gain in function observed within the treatment group and serve to bolster confidence that there is a positive treatment effect. Today we saw data that a Teplerson treated boys walk longer, walk farther, have more dystrophin on blotting, and on fluorescence. Moreover, this drug is safe. It seems prudent to recommend accelerated approval based on the data. During the course of my career, I've diagnosed and cared for 250 boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, more than 20 of whom had exon 51 skippable mutations. Despite optimal care, none of those boys walk beyond 12 years of age. This clearly differs from the Ateplerson 201-202 experience, and where boys continue to walk for three to four years of treatment at ages greater than 12. Duchenne Connect is the largest online registry, and in 2014, my group published a multivariate analysis looking at all 78 parameters. This black line shows the fraction of boys who remain ambulant with the external control data showing an average age at loss of ambulation of 12 years of age. This is no different than the red line showing the Duchenne Connect data indicating the external control group is indeed typical of Duchenne muscular dystrophy and quite different from the green line indicating how the 12 long-term treated boys for the Tepresin have fared. This is strong evidence of a positive drug effect. Many of these opinions were shared in a letter uh, drafted by 30 ex 36 experts in Duchenne that actually do support that there is substantial evidence of efficacy for ateplosin based on the clinical data and based on the reasonable comparison to multiple external data sets. I have followed Justin since the age of three and treated with intermittent twice weekly steroids. Based on all natural history that you and I have reviewed, he should have stopped walking by age 13. After recovery from a femur fracture, he is still walking. I have observed unexpected stability in the one boy who I care for who mirrors the accumulated data of the Edipleurison boys. It is only in the past year, his fourth year on Edipleurison, that his walking has substantially weakened, especially in the past several months. These degenerative changes are coming much later than I expected. Clinically, we rarely see a teenager remain stable over six months and never over two years. Yet to highlight just one subject in the 201 trial, 006, his six-minute walk test has remained stable over four years with values of 355, 329, 359, 332 meters. He is now over 14 years old and still able to rise from the floor. Our center was a lead enrolling site of the Myzyme studies, and I think a comparison to this small study using historical cohort is relevant to the discussion today. The primary endpoint of the Myzyme studies was ventilator-free survival. The secondary endpoint of overall survival was compared to an only 2% survival rate in the historical cohort. After four years of treatment, 44% or seven of the 16 subjects were alive without assisted ventilation. In comparison, the clinical endpoint of functional ambulation is equally critically important endpoint in Duchenne. The importance of this type of binary endpoint is often emphasized by the agency and experts in the field. I think that the finding of 83% of Teplerson study participants who are ambulant after four years of therapy compared to the finding of 44% survival should not be overlooked. I would like to echo the opinions of my colleagues before me that uh, loss of ambulation is truly a hard endpoint. I would like to be able to prescribe this medication to other Duchenne boys who are in menopause exon 51 skipping. As a physician, I want the option to prescribe a Teplerson. Although this is a small study, the effect is in fact well controlled given the constraints of pediatric rare disease research. And based on these observations of my patient in the study in the light of the findings today, I strongly believe a Teplerson meets the standard for substantial evidence of effectiveness and warrants approval in boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And while not a cure, the data indicates that the drug could slow disease progression. 
Many leaders in the Duchenne research and clinical communities have voiced enthusiastic support for Ataplerson. And as a science and evidence-based organization, their support carries great weight with us. We urge you to strongly consider all of the tools available to the FDA to allow the earliest possible access to a Teplerson. Thank you.